Welcome back to Dare to Call Him Friend. And I realized something I haven't told you guys for uh, quite a long time that I actually wrote this book, Dare to Call Him Friend. And you can get it on Amazon. However, to my friends who know me and know how to get hold of me, here are on Facebook, you can get a free copy of the book I'd like to give to you in a PDF format, which means you'll have to read it off of your laptop or on your smartphone or on your iPad. But anyhow, today we're talking about the fullness of time. And there is a verse that's actually one of my favorites. I know I've got a lot of them. But in Galatians 4, verse 4, it says, In the fullness of time came, God sent forth his Son. And the first few words there, when the fullness of time came. That verse has helped me so much. And you're asking why. Well, I don't have a lot of patience, I have to admit. I don't like to wait for things. If I have the chance to press one day delivery on Amazon for free, you bet your bottom dollar that's what I'm going to do. But sometimes patience is needed in order for us to relax, to see God do all that he wants to do. Now, I am not a baker by any stretch of the imagination. I haven't made cookies in, since I was a teenager. I haven't baked a loaf of bread for about 20 years, maybe, maybe more. And it didn't turn out that well. But one thing I do know is that making a loaf of bread requires patience and expertise and attention to detail. You need to make sure that the water you're going to bloom your yeast in is just at the right temperature. You need to make sure that no salt gets into that yeast mixture until the yeast has a good chance to come alive again. You need to knead that bread to a certain elasticity, all that kind of stuff. And then you need to set it aside and allow it to proof, which means to rise up. And just when you think, hey, the bread's ready to go in the oven, what do most bread recipes ask you to do? Punch that sucker down and allow it to form a second rise. Often, especially when we're in the midst of being needed or in the midst of being set aside in the darkness with a towel over us to help us rise, it's hard for us to remember that the master baker has done this many times before in our lives. I looked back at the times that I am grateful that God did not prematurely give me the answer that I thought I should be having in a certain situation. I am grateful that just at the right time when life was falling apart around me, even in the years before I knew him, he would send key people into my life at crisis points to guide me through them or to just say that they saw me, that they knew I was going through a rough time. And those situations actually saved my life. I was abused at home and I was bullied at school. And so when I grew up, having a safe place was an unknown quantity. And I can maybe say three or four times that I can look back at and I can say that it was God's saving grace that brought me through those really desperate times. And moments before that key person entered into my life, even seconds before that, I thought I was all alone. I was in the darkness. There was no way out and there was no escape. And yet, when the fullness of time came, God sent his messengers in earthly vessels to bring me some hope. If you're going through some really dark, scary times, God is working behind the scenes. And no matter 
what your earthly circumstances look like right now, God is not the cause of them. Other people's behavior, perhaps mistakes that you've made, perhaps outright sin that you made, that you're facing the earthly consequences of those sins, God did not cause them. And he is there to help you through those rough times. He will not abandon you. I promise you. And there is a way out, but only if you trust the way maker. When I am in that kind of place, I am usually wondering if there is any possible way out of my situation. And in my head, I'm trying to think of every possible way to get out of the situation I'm in. And because I'm so busy trying to figure out what I should do next, I make it difficult for God's voice to break through to my ears. And I'm learning. I'm still learning that when that anxiety and panic rises up, then is the time that I need to turn to him. Second Corinthians 4 verse 18. We look not to the things that are seen, but to the things that are unseen. So what your circumstances are that are right before your eyes, don't focus on them. Focus on the God that is unseen, that is busy, behind the mess, making order out of your chaos. For the things that are seen are transient. This really dark place you're at right now is transient. It's not going to last. It's not forever. But the things that are unseen are eternal. Perhaps you feel abandoned right now. Perhaps you feel rejected by the one who promised they'd always be there. You have a choice. You can look back at the times he has come through or put yourself on a boat in the sea of bitterness, unbelief, and false resignation. Even if you are in a dark place, it does not mean that his light is not there.